Hi, I'm Clark on Temptress. I've developed something called the Bank Manager. It's a device that lets you put lithium into your lead bank, does a lot of good things for lithium, charges it right. Well, I get a lot of questions. You know, we're selling a lot of them now. I'm gonna answer a question today that comes up a lot. This is partly so I don't have to type the answer anymore, but this is a really useful thing, whether you want a bank manager or not. If you've got an off-grid system, if you've got a boat, a camper, a house, anything like that, and you're gonna put batteries in, today I'm gonna to answer the question, how do you hook up the big wires? How do you hook the banks together? How many banks do you need? How do you set them up so that you get the results you want out of those banks? So today's video, we're gonna look into, in a practical way, how do I hook up my either hybrid system, regular house battery system, or house battery system with dedicated starter batteries and everything? This table might look clear right now, but by the end of the video, it's going to be full of batteries and we're going to build a whole system. But we've got to start at the beginning. So first, we're going to start out with this. This is going to represent our regular lead house battery. This is a, the simplest uh, possible setup. We've got one battery in the whole system and we're going to use it. So now we're going to hook up the house battery in the, in the simplest way. But a little aside, I got some fairly small wire here. I think I'm using 10, 12 gauge wire. There's not a battery system in the world you would like to hook such small wires right to your battery. You're going to be using big stuff. Also, got to do a safe system. If you don't understand how to do a safe system, hire someone that knows how to do it. I've got some videos that might give you a little guidance on fusing and such, but in short, you really kind of want fuses. You don't want to burn down your boat if something goes wrong. You definitely want a switch of some kind on many of the batteries so that you can bring them out of the bank for maintenance. I just find that way easier. If you're not a little afraid of this step, because you're touching the source of power here. There's a lot of energy in batteries, a lot. If you're not a little bit afraid, maybe you shouldn't be doing this. If you do it wrong, if you short this, bad things will happen. Okay, let's have fun now. So we have our battery, our house battery, and we have it connected to the bus. Uh, this bus, positive and negative, would be where your circuit panels are connected to, all your circuit breakers, all your loads, and eventually you'll see all your charge sources. This is kind of the heart of the electrical part of the boat system. It's nice to have instrumentation so you can tell what's going on. So we're gonna hook up a voltmeter here. That's set for DC volts, and I'll clip it on to the bus. And what do we find? The bus is at 12.86 volts. This battery is fully charged. And in fact, it was taken off charge just fairly recently. Usually it's 12.80 uh, or just a, bad, a little bit below, but it was recently charged. So that's why it's just a tad above. It's also nice to be able to tell how the current is flowing through the system. Very often you'll have what's called a shunt in the negative line and that shunt reports to a meter that can tell you the current flowing through it. For this, we're gonna use this device here. It's a clamp-on meter. This might be a little harder to read, but I'll refer to it when we, uh, as things change. And it's more or less zero right now. Finally, we're gonna add a load. So just grab a load here, well, and put it on. It's an old incandescent light bulb. So with that on, and I, I don't really wanna see it so much, I'll put it over there. We see that the voltage went down just a little bit because we're taking power out of the battery. The clamp on meter here is showing 1.36, more or less. It moves around a little bit. Amps coming out of the battery into the light bulb. Finally, I'm gonna add one more thing here. Uh, these two wires are actually connected to basically my electronics bench power supply. And this is gonna be our stand-in for a charge source because I can make it do things. I can make it act like the sun came out. I can make it go away. So we're gonna hook that up. Again, charge source goes right to this bus. Negative and pos positive. Okay. So nothing really changed. I'm gonna take my power supply now, turn it on and do some magic here that will let me turn it up. Okay, I've just cranked it up a little bit and now it's putting out four-ish amps into the system. 
let's take a look at the meters. We notice that there's a net charge on the battery. Not 4 amps because that light is still running, drawing that 1.3, but we can see that the amp number is now around positive 2. That's going down because this battery is fully charged and it's not accepting power as it's getting charged up. Also, the voltage went up just a little bit. This is the simplest battery system you can have. You've got a way to charge it, you've got a way to use the power out of it, it's just one battery, really simple. This is our starting position. If you add lithium to your system using the bank manager, you start out with this core system. You set all your charge sources for this battery so that you're telling it it's charging lead. And that's all you do. You let the bank manager take care of the lithium. Speaking of the lithium, let's bring that in now. All right. I have a lithium battery. I'm going to add this to our model. This is a 200 amp hour uh, lithium iron phosphate. And I'm going to hook it up. It's real easy to hook up. Okay, when you put your lithium in, you just put it in parallel with that heart of the system uh, battery. Again, do as I say, not as I do. Tighten these down much tighter. This is only going to have a few amps going through it. In your case, you need real good connections. We hook the lithium up to the lead in a simple parallel. We just bring the negatives together and we bring the positives together. Except we bring the positives together with a bank manager. And a bank manager consists of a couple parts. It has a contactor, which is what actually does the switching, and the bank manager module itself, which is the brains of the thing, and this little blue donut that is a current sensor, much like the one we're using up front. This will track the amount of power that is going into and coming out of the lithium battery. So give me a second to hook this up. Now, I happen to know this switch is in the off state. I tested it. If you're doing an install, you should do that, but you still should do this little test. Before you connect it, tap it, look, tap it, pull it right away. If you see a spark, that means this is in the on state and these batteries are a different charge state and you don't want that. So then you would verify this off and do it again. But it's off, it's off. So you can connect this together. Almost forgot, the bank manager needs uh, a ground source, and that ground source should go either directly to the lithium negative or to big wires all the way to lithium negative. You definitely have to have that ground knowing what's happening voltage-wise on your lithium. So it would be valid in this case to put it here or here because this is a great big wire, but it wouldn't be appropriate to put it down here on the loads. So now we're going to turn on the bank manager. It's going through its boot procedure. A little click that turned off the bi-stable relay. If you're using a bi-stable relay, just for safety, it always turns it off when it first starts, even though it was already off. Then it turns it off again just before it starts. What we have now, the display has come up. We see that the lithium battery is at 13.2 volts. The lead is at 12.8. The bank manager has got them disconnected. Uh, on the initial start, it's always going to say 100% because I really have no clue yet what's happening in the lithium. I just chose to say 100 until I know better. And um, the bank manager is not going to bring those two together until their voltages are more or less equal. Now, if the sun came out and started charging, that would bring the lead up. Remember, we're charging the lead. So I'm going to do that now with my device. There we go. I brought up the, uh, the, voltage, the current coming into the system. The bank manager saw it when the lead came up. It brought the bank together. We got a little blue light here. And it says the lithium is getting 1.6 amps coming into it. If I look at my device on the wall, I see that actually 4 amps are coming into the system. I know that 1.3 is going to the loads. The rest is going to the lead. There's a lot going on here. 
But from the lithium's point of view, really all I have to know is that uh, 1.7 amps are going into the lithium and what the voltage is. Well, we got the bank manager up here. I'm just going to show you a few quick things. Let's just take a look at the menu system. You just push this button. The contactor will disconnect. You heard it click and you get into the menu. The menu items you, you can scroll through by turning the little knob and activate them. You push the button. Lithium battery size, bank size, lithium bank size is the one thing everybody needs to set. And you just have to dial in the size of the bank you're uh, controlling with the bank manager. In my case, it's a 200 amp hour lithium uh, iron phosphate battery. Push the button. Uh, you may want to adjust other things, but they're all there and this is all described in the menu. When you're done, it says resume operation. Click and you're right back in service. Whenever you're connected, you'll see the word connected and you'll see a blue light shining through the little mascot guy. That tells you you're connected. If you see no light and it's black, you're disconnected. And if it's blinking, that means it's in the process of doing something. Usually it means it just disconnected and it's waiting for the voltages to separate because it doesn't want to go click, 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 click. Um, yep. Another thing of interest is that little B. That means it's set for a bi-stable relay. That's really important if you're using a bi-stable relay. If you set this device for a monostable relay, which is correct if you're using a monostable, a regular relay, and hook it to a bi-stable relay, within a couple seconds, this will destroy your $180 relay. You just simply have to have that set right, which is why I put the little B or little M right on the main screen, so you'll always know before you hook it up. So in a normal application, this would run throughout the day as the solar's charging. Hopefully you're getting more than 1.7 amps into your lithium. It's going to charge that lithium up, then the bank manager will disconnect the lithium. You'll hear the click and uh, you'll be separate. Your system will be running off the lead and your solar panel for the rest of the sunny part of the day. So you're really running off the solar panel. And when the sun goes away or the device decides that your lead is fully charged, the lead voltage will come down. Bank manager will bring them back together. You've heard this story before in other videos. In short, what I want to talk about is we've got the core lead house battery and we've got lithium kind of as an aside, doing most of the heavy lifting, doing most of the supply of power through the bank manager, taking the early part of the charge until it's fully charged. This guy is basically resting on vacation, just held at a float charge throughout its life. Because of that, this could be a starter battery. Starter batteries have thin plates and they can put out a lot of power. And that makes them kind of uniquely good to work in this situation because if you're on a boat, this might actually be the battery that starts your engine. Usually you keep that battery absolutely separate from your house batteries and they have great big thick plates. They're expensive and they react slowly to current going in and out with their voltage. In the bank manager setup with lithium, since this guy's doing the heavy lifting and this guy's on vacation, this doesn't have to be a deep cycle. It's not going to be cycling. This guy's going to take the cycle life. So this could be a starter. Since this battery won't be touched until this one is all but empty, this battery, if it's responsible for starting your system, you know, could be relied on. It's always going to be there, fully charged, ready to do the work it needs to do, what lead needs to do. So, if you think you have the discipline to not leave big devices on and run your batteries completely dead when you're away from the boat or overnight, this might be all the battery you need. A lithium bank to handle your normal cycle loads and a lead bank to basically keep all the charge controllers sane and be responsible for starting the engine and maybe windless, that kind of a deal, the big loads. But you might say, nope, I want a dedicated starter battery that can't be affected by any load. I, I don't care. I need it to always be trustworthy there. Even if everything in the system goes dead, that's what I want. So that's the next thing we're going to talk about. So back to my little pile of batteries. We're going to grab this one. So 
Now we're going to add this battery. This is now our starter battery dedicated for starting the engine. On some boats, this battery is also responsible for things like the windlass and the bow thruster. Um, those are okay because the engine is running at that time, so you know sharing that bank makes sense. And you always want those up to snuff. So how do we hook it up? Much like everything we've done so far, we just hook the negatives together in parallel. No, you won't do this with alligator clips. And we hook the positives together, but again, through a device. This device is called a voltage sensitive relay, and they're really pretty cool. Uh, let me get this hooked up and we'll talk about it. Okay, and it just went click for us and the light came on. So I've got these batteries hooked up in parallel with their positives connected through a voltage sensitive relay. As soon as I connected them together, the light came right on and this thing made a contact sound like a relay does. Why did it do that? Well, its job in life is to look at the voltage of these two batteries. And if they ever go above 13.3, it brings them together and shares the charging wealth because the only reason lead would be above 13.3 is there's some kind of goodness charging happening. If these batteries all dropped below 12.8, which is where the lead starts to come in, in other words, your lithium's mostly dead, um, this device would separate these batteries. This would stay at 12.8, which is fully charged, ready and willing to start that engine if you need it. And this one would start providing power. So maybe you had a few cloudy days, you depleted your lithium, but you got a big lead bank, not just this one, might be okay to go a few days off the lead. It'll separate these two, that's available, this is doing its proper job. That's it. These are the two ways that I would set up a, uh, a, a battery system. Either I accept that I'm responsible for making sure the lead doesn't go dead to the point where I can't start an engine, uh, that could be for a lot of reasons. It could just be my discipline or the size of my batteries, the fact that I'm a liveaboard, I watch it every day. Uh, it could be that I say, well, I got a generator, it has a whole other system, and that's how I'll come back from an emergency. In that situation, you really only need the heart lead house battery, which could be a starter type battery, and your add on lithium. If I didn't accept that, I say, no matter what, I push the button, that engine starts. Very simply, I had a dedicated starter battery and a voltage sensitive relay. Those are the two ways I recommend generally hooking up uh, an off-grid power system that has an engine. If you don't have an engine, obviously, you would only go this far. I hope that answers your question about how to hook up the big wires, draw the big drawings, make the big decisions about how to move the gross amps around your boat. Um, We've got some other electrical videos that might help you with things like fusing and wire size. Uh, take a look at our other work. I think you'll find it interesting. And I hope this was interesting and I hope it was helpful. If you did find it helpful, please, please make a comment below saying so. Uh, at least push the like button. And if you've got friends that you know might benefit, share the video link with them. That helps YouTube know this is a worthwhile video. We don't make uh, beaches and bikinis videos. We don't have cute dogs. We give you strong content about how to really do things. Problem is, if you watch this long, you realize you're probably one of the few friends of yours that really watches this far. For these videos to be popular, we need to do some work. We need to share them. So I really appreciate it if you'd help me out in those ways. Bye, Tetris.